Namaste, Professor. Welcome back. So, thank you very much, Divyaji. Very nice to meet with uh, our uh, members of uh, Infinity Group as well as uh, the audience, because the audience of Infinity Group are extremely knowledgeable and very, very uh, understanding. And some of their observations and comments in the video are very useful, actually. Thank you very much and uh, namaste to all of you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, Professor, I recently came across your article on feminine economics, and I must admit that it's one of the most interesting pieces that I've ever come across. And it's, I also see the lack of discussion on this subject. The title itself is quite an interesting one. It says, women ask, where is our trillion dollar output? Uh, so basically, it starts off by questioning the whole premise that what a woman does for her family, be it cooking or raising children, etc., is considered not to be legitimate work or rather productive to be accounted for GDP or national income. You also point out this view arises from the Eurocentric worldview or how the idea of women is propagated by Abrahamic faiths. So could you elaborate on that, Professor? Yeah, sure. You see, I think if I remember, I started the article by telling my elder sister, who is no more, whenever people meet her, uh, she, they used to ask, do you work? She used to say, what else I do? From morning 6 a.m. to night 10 p.m. <laughs> you know, you mean, what they mean is, by work is uh, going to an office and earning some salary. This is uh, typically West West-centric view of the world, actually, that uh, unless and until you go to office, you are not uh, doing anything productive. This is the because the economists in the West have measured uh, the GDP of respective countries uh, without taking into account the services rendered by women. This is extremely important. Whenever they talk about uh, gross domestic product, they mean the output of the country, output of the nation and services. What they mean by services is the paid services. And uh, obviously, household work is not paid anywhere. And uh, as the you know, humor goes uh, that uh, if you <clears throat> marry your uh, servant maid, the natural income comes down, actually. Or if you divorce your wife and uh, keep her a servant maid, the natural income goes up. This is the, you know, the, the West-centric uh, world because they... Uh, first of all, they always considered women as uh, uh, what one can call a uh, lower than men, lesser category than men. Actually, they had a debate till 17th century whether women have soul. Uh, can you beat that? The church periodically used to meet and discuss. And uh, somewhere around the 17th century, if I am right, they were sort of having a moderate consensus that uh, women also have soul. So... And you know, the voting right, uh, for instance, in Switzerland, such as the, one of the advanced countries, it was given as uh, late as uh, 60s, 1960s. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was so much. And uh, they to get voting right, they have to fight. Women's suffragette movement and all these things. In India, you know, in 47, uh, for, sorry, 49, 50, in the constitution discussion, there was not even a discussion or, uh, you know, about women getting voting right, it was considered as natural. Yeah. That's all. Nobody talked about it even one sentence. And this is not talked about by the Indian people. This is something very peculiar, actually. Incidentally, we had a Mysore assembly much before that in the 20s and 30s, where women representatives were there. You know, it was never considered as something to be discussed, something to be granted, another thing. So very recently only in the particularly in the uh, fighter force uh, of the army, whether uh, women should be included or not. And that discussion was there. That has been there for a very, very long time. You know, do nothing to do with the being women, but much more to do with the being the, uh, you know, issue of uh, being in the, you know, the fighting core. That's a different thing. Anyhow, so our, the, the unfortunately, the entire Indian uh, discussion on women is Eurocentric. It's copied from Europe. And whatever they think are uh, uh, not being done, another thing, immediately here also everybody makes a... Uh, you see, we have the, in the world, we have the largest number of uh, pilots, women pilots. Yeah. Nobody talks about it, actually. And uh, it's, you know, it's considered as, you know, when I get into a plane, when I see a 
woman pilot or something you know it's considered as natural there is nothing big deal about it so but uh, nobody mentions about it or nobody talks same thing about our civil service and uh, for instance financial industry significant portion i would i think 60% of the banking finance and all these uh, private equity firm and other thing are all women only many of them are in top position i am not talking about being stenographers or secretaries and other thing number one position actually in the banking finance and other industries so but uh, again we don't make a big deal about it in the sense it's there that's all so this is something the whole but the whole idea is women should lose her uh, women characteristics in order to be uh, considered as uh, equal that's a western centric approach right that's a typical west centric approach and uh, you know that uh, because uh, you know west carries huge amount of guilt about women let's be very clear about it because okay. uh, they they burnt millions of women as a bitches in the europe actually during the uh, you know some uh, the 12 to 14 15 16th century not a single man was burnt as a witch it was always a woman who was burnt as a witch and the total number could be you know anywhere up to you know uh, you know 10 to 15 million so very very large number of people they have burnt and uh, they have never treated women as uh, uh, equal or anything and that is the reason why all this you know and uh, our people immediately copy that you know Correct. and say that you know we also should require uh, you know see voting rights as well as the representation in uh, assembly parliament all these things are given without any major agitation or uh, nothing actually so right. this is something i think uh, yeah. we have to keep in back of the mind right okay Yeah, so professor you also pointed out how uh, the contributions of women to families was delegitimized and in order to earn legitimacy they have to enter the workforce that is the corporate workforce and this was consciously engineered through advertisements creating the notion of super yeah, yeah. see so they, what, what happened is uh, first of all let us be very clear the big business like small families this is very important and okay. they you know if there are 10 member family using one refrigerator if there are five two member family five refrigerator will be used very okay. simple the oh. market will become very large that's how the you know the joint family got uh, reduced into nuclear family nuclear family into nowadays i would rather call it as proton family single parent family is that because so, of women entering the workforce for yeah so what happened when you have uh, you know when they reduce it to the size of the family the people you know invariably tended to enter into the what you may call the paid workforce i would say right. i won't use the word workforce by itself right which is i think according to me which is the most uh, the stupidest way to measure you know a woman uh, maybe at home you know who, who, who you know who brings up her children who teaches them another thing is uh, as much important as much providing service as much uh, uh, developing future citizens actually now okay. what has happened is in the process of getting into the so called workforce women have got uh, both the uh, activities in this and they have to take care of the home front they have also to take care of the office front this is something which is uh, it only a double whammy which they themselves has uh, got it on their head so i would not uh, uh, blame anybody else or something for the simple reason there are uh, very many uh, situations in which uh, women uh, take a very leading role in terms of uh, the activity for instance a simple thing on the other day i was in somebody's home and uh, i asked the boy which class you are before that the father answered he is in 6th standard Then the boy told Papa, "I am in eighth standard. This is the level of uh, see. The point is, I want to stress the mother will know what is the next day's homework the boy has to do, or the girl has to do. Mother will know who are all friends. Mother will know who are all are you know what type of relationship is developing. Mother is extraordinarily cautious about her boy as well as her girls. Right? Father may or may not know actually because of various you see there is you just simply cannot deny the role of a mom 
just because you shout and you know it's it's uh, it's a very very uh, funny world actually uh, so the role of mom is role of mom actually nay 89 year old one lady recently my neighbor uh, i just sent a place she was going to her village in uh, gulbarga i am in bangalore in far away she has a son who is 60 years she tells me to take care of her son unbelievable actually 90 year but moms are moms i am telling you and she rings up sometime and ask as he eat and as he done and so there is a there is something it is partly biological partly uh, what one can call uh, the psychological partly also built up there is nothing and there is nothing to be ashamed about it or nothing to be you know like uh, so this is something i think uh, uh, we should keep in the back of the mind right yeah. and if one thought how it evolved from first they started off as nurses then typists then copy makers or secretaries and then the whole they were pushed to like uh, the metaphor break the glass ceilings was used <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, but not uh, i don't think the same thing is applicable in our country actually right. i don't uh, say because uh, our uh, system is not such a lateral type of you know uh, you are only for this or you are only at all levels for instance uh, post independent there were these uh, psus came you know bhl b mlb hmt and all of them conducted entrance exam and quite a large number of uh, girls have joined that and now they are all in uh, very top positions and other thing companies like isro companies like you know and uh, same thing about uh, uh, banking and other companies very many so uh, our route is not the route which is suggested in the we have enough amount of people in the clerical and other cadres also but uh, not that you know like the, and uh, you know breaking the ceiling glass and other thing are all western jargon we have started adopting that also here Uh, i don't think uh, uh, that would be a good uh, way of uh, comparing or anything right 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 and and professor this book uh, being different talks about this concept called western universalism where you apply the western gaze to solve all the problems of the world do you think feminism is also one such issue definitely they you know they counterpose it and you know they they try to you know that what uh, this one size it's all attitude of americans correct adopted by european doesn't work at all anywhere else actually right right because uh, there are different cultures different flavors and different type of languages different type of you know experiences it's very very uh, critical and important and uh, see our cultural fabric and mosaic is totally different we have so tremendous commonalities but still at the same time we have tremendous specificities also right. we don't try to make it into uh, semitize or you know like abraham has you know everybody should be uh, wearing same uh, jeans and everybody should be wearing drinking only coca cola and you know that type of uh, that doesn't work actually feminism is uh, in a sense uh, borrowed from there and uh, they would like to bulldoze everybody into and uh, i think if you ask me personally feminism is a funny word in indian context <laughs> true See, we have we have three major gods correct <laughs> parvati lakshmi and saraswati one is for education saraswati one is for uh, uh, wealth lakshmi and one is for power parvati correct and you pray to them to get a big benefits correct. the other gods you know even shiv what she will give she will give some ash what i am having in my forehead that's all you will give and uh, you can't give uh, vishnu what you will give you go to vishnu temple they will give you some water that's all uh, you know which has been uh, used for uh, abhishek what else you will give nothing in the month of uh, you know uh, december margari you will get some pongal if at all you know. so major benefits you get only by praying to these gods right and they are recognized incidentally no other culture has got uh, women gods right out into uh, actually my friends in us and europe when they come here they are always puzzled actually about this uh, women god not only women god women worshiping trees and other thing also roadside right. one of my colleague used to stop the car and ask what is this 
This is a common sight in India. In many places, you find a group of women in the morning uh, pouring some water on a tree or something and uh, you know doing some puja to a tree. This is never ever. So actually, we have enormous amount of women shouted. Now stood on a rooftop and told that this is what this is considered as natural. That's all. There is no. You know, right. and certain areas, of course, uh, women are also uh, encouraged to, to, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, big business families, I am telling you, major decisions are never taken without consulting women right. in the breakfast table or in the dining table. It will be, you know, they will, they may not give models and all these things, but they have intuitive idea of uh, where things will work, where things will not work. This okay. is actually one of the leading millionaire uh, businessman, he before uh, joint collaboration and other thing, he always takes the partner, foreign or Indian, to home for a dinner. His uh, mother, his spouse and others are all sitting around and then watching. And at the end of it, uh, when it de departs, they make uh, pertinent observations about is he worthwhile to be a partner at all for you. So very, this you know, these are not uh, fairly very well known or anything, but, uh, but this uh, is how we function. We are, you know, we don't, uh, uh, you know, for instance, large number of our sages are women actually. Many of the rishis are all women who have uh, enunciated different type of sutras and different type of, you know, even when Adi Shankara had a big debate with Mantan Mishra, the right. judge was his wife. It's Absolutely. not uh, some third party thing. <laughs> it was his wife. And it was uh, trusted that she will be independent. That is something nobody, you know, asked for. No, no, no. There will be some sort of a partiality and nothing like that. So okay. I think uh, very, very, this uh, feminism is a fad. I would rather put it bluntly. Yes. It's sort of, it is, uh, it's there uh, in abroad. So it's also here in India. That's all. Something like communism, I would say. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like it's so intrinsic to our culture that we don't need another movement like feminism or whatever to claim that's really absurd in our context. And uh, Professor, this whole notion of achieving equality between men and women instead of seeing them as complementary pairs is itself a sort of, uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Do you, how do you see, does this impact the family values and also is there an impact on the national prosperity by trying to see yeah. both as equals and not as complementary. Yes. Complementary only. It, you know, both as equal, you can go on telling. How can, you know, there are certain uh, issues uh, only women can uh, be leading. There is absolutely no way you can try to, uh, what one can call, alter it or anything. And, you know, essentially, because, you know, whether man or woman is uh, coming out of uh, part of a woman, this is very, very, uh, critical and very important actually. There are many contemporary, many, many books are coming out about you know, these issues. Uh, there are some Western writers also who are getting more uh, uh, courageous and who talk in terms of you know what type of uh, biological and uh, so it's it, equal is you know just you know all blabbering only. That's all. It's uh, it's actually that why we call the concept of Ardhana Rishuna. Half woman and half men. You know, there is a god called Ardhanarishra. Actually, Shiv and right. Parvati are half half. So that is a complementarity. You know, that's not a, it's not a, uh, this or that or something like that. Okay. So this is some, you know, there is a, uh, nothing what one can call as uh, somebody who, as old as 80 years, he wanted a cup of coffee from his wife only, who is 75. And somebody told, what if this, uh, you know, what if. What does this mean? What 40 years he knows how to make for me? Very simple. As simple as that. Nothing. Uh, similarly, she also knows uh, how he can take her out and where to go and all those things. You know, these are too many of uh, issues are there. And uh, they are, you know, very, very uh, complex uh, type of relationship between a man and woman. It's not something which is, uh, you know, prefixed or which is... Uh, so that is, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it will take a long time for the Western world to come to the understanding of uh, 
how to deal with this right but unfortunately they have imposed this on our society as well and the irony is that women yeah. try to because that is how that is how we thought we measure our success in terms of how much we are appreciated by the west this is very very critical our we say look east but our neck is turned to west only <laughs> See, it's a, we are umbilical cords are tied to west. Let's be very clear about it. And, uh, and genetically, we are, uh, you know, we are tuned to the west. So this is very, very. Uh, it will take a long, long time for us to uh, get out of that. Actually, very. But now I am finding uh, because of efforts of people like Rajiv Malhotra and so many others also, uh, you know, uh, following him. Many more uh, writings are coming. Many more, you know. I would rather call the Indian assertion or whatever you call that is slowly taking place. People are not taking it uh, lying down. If uh, right. somebody you know ridicules or somebody puts uh, you know somebody without understanding anything begin to criticize you or anything. In the very old past, we were a country of you know snake charmers yeah. and other thing, but uh, now it is changing. That approach itself is changing. I would say definitely, and uh, very minor but important aspect is uh, people like uh, Rajiv Malhotra. Not only in his current avatar, in his earlier avatar in IT also, mm -hmm. that played a very important role in globally making India, okay. a, you know, country to be respected. This is something very very uh, thing I always say. Right? right, information technology has also helped us actually. Okay. To tell others that look, we can also do uh, what you think you can do. True. We can do better. Right. True. Uh, so, right? Professor, to finally conclude, you end the article saying that as is a woman-centric civilization and predominantly our uh, economy is feminine economics when compared to other maybe the Western world. So, why would you call this? As yeah, Western is uh, not uh, feminine at all. Western is completely masculine. Yeah. The amount of animals they killed, the amount of trees they have killed, the amount of, you know, for cleaning their uh, bottom, they have uh, erased, uh, you know, millions of uh, trees in, uh, you know, I don't know how many thousands of forests. And uh, similarly about uh, their treatment of, their idea of animal is to hunt them, kill them. Right. And uh, use it as uh, trophies at home or uh, use it for food. So they have uh, no way they can be considered in terms of feminine. They are masculine and all wars, all wars are fought by men. Let's be very clear about it. Uh, no war is uh, for in the history fought by women, except some, you know, here and there. But all wars are, of course, all wars could be fought by men for women. That is a separate issue, <laughs> right? So what I mean to say is that Europe is full of bloodshed and war and other things. It's all fully masculine. And right. man. Well, as you look at the Indian situation, till the arrival of the Mughals and other things, we were yes. uh, comprehensively feminine, actually. We were right. uh, very much uh, tuned and uh, attuned. And we are not... Uh, and, the, you know, people call, call instant an example I will give. Talk about caste, caste oppression, caste, caste... I asked a Marxist professor in JNU, tell me one major caste war in India. Right. Second place. In the last 2000 years, some major caste war, you know, Kurmis killed, uh, Kiyoris, Kiyoris killed, Yadav, Yadav killed. Right. He agreed. There is, I told her, how can uh, 1500 years you say some groups were oppressed and they never uh, revolted. They never had a war with others. I am not able to uh, understand it. Because much of it is propaganda, much right. more by the actual fact. So, actually, the whole uh, idea is Europe is masculine economic, destructive, and it's not really, and uh, Asia, and more so India, is a feminine economy. One example I will give you, the yes. largest, uh, even today, in Japan, China, India, and other things, the largest saving is done by households, okay. not by corporate or not by government. Now, we okay. save something like 30% of our GDP, approximately. Of that, you know, 70% of that comes from household saving. 
in the west it is the government saving is significant corporate household saving is very minimal what has happened is in the west the state as government has taken over the responsibility of the families right in terms of old age care in terms of child care and stuff what i loosely call i rather call it as nationalization of families have taken place in the west privatization of business and nationalization of families in right. india still hopefully families are intact right. and uh, that is the growth of most of these uh, foreign uh, instigated ngos and other things how to destroy indian families that is the one point agenda today for them because once you destroy the family you destroy all other type of building blocks for a civilization so and it is very difficult in india to destroy it as of now because as long as women are uh, holding the they are very very intuitive they are very very powerful in terms of holding the reins of the family so it's not going to be easy let's see how the you know, future battle shapes up right 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 so professor is there a direct correlation between family and national prosperity because then they would say countries like us are very prosperous by no. national families no we will uh, perhaps when you are talking about a gun culture in us and other thing we'll take it up <laughs> okay <laughs> okay professor okay this is a very in us us is very prosperous because once it was extremely family oriented oh all right okay. 60 70 80s onwards the decline started okay and same way your economic decline has also started oh that's an interesting right we will look at it in another context right okay okay professor thank you for this insightful conversation thanks a lot